This is Todd Coburn from Cal Poly Pomona with Arrow 3271, a supplemental lecture on damage tolerance and how we find the final crack growth. This little excerpt is from one of our Zoffice sessions and so it's not really clean and pretty but it will go through the process that discussed in your handbook. Enjoy. And in this screen, we're going to pull up this Mamba Jamba. And right here, section 4-4. Four, four. Are you with me? Yes. Evaluating final crack length before fast fracture. I give you two methods. The approximate method and the trial and error method. This trial and error method will nail it for you if you follow that. Once again, what you're going to do, and we've uh, done this a few times, uh, you're going to, here, let's see, I guess I can do it this way. We've done this a few times. You're going to say, okay, iteration number one, we have an A, right? AI at this point would be our initial flaw size. Let's just say it's 001. I don't remember what it is. And then you're going to calculate the beta based on that. And then you're going to calculate your uh, K1 based on that, right? You're going to compare that to K1C, right? Actually, you don't even have to do that. What you're going to do is you're going to, uh, for just getting the crack length, you're then going to use that to estimate what your new final crack length is based on a and beta, okay? That's what this says. Now, what Rogelio was doing before is he then used that AF as his new AI, and he went and continued the process, which will tend to miss. Remember, oh. if, we had a, if we had one down here, and then we go up here, look, this is going like this, this is going like this, and it's gonna, it could easily converge right up here, but actually if you'd worked your way up here, you would have found it actually failed right there. But because this curve is nonlinear, if the curve had been linear like this, then the approach Rogelio used will be even faster. The problem is if you have a nonlinear curve, it will often miss the boat. Unless you're moving from like here to here, it'll probably work. Or from here to here, it'll probably work. But if you're moving from here to there, it will probably miss the boat. How many of the beta curves, and I thought I asked, you specifically this question at past office how many of these curves are linear um i think there's only one of them none of them are linear. not one a couple oh. of them have a couple spots that are close to linear for a few little inches oh. and then they're not linear again so that approach will often not converge so instead of doing that what you're going to do now is you're going to say look let's say you go oh one and you calculate this is uh, 0.95, you're going to say, well, okay, well, that looks like too big of a change. So what I'm going to do instead of going to 0.95 and instead of, now what you did with your delta N, which is a slightly, actually, if you look in your handbook beyond this, there are other methods for calculating uh, the life and actually this thing, numerical calculus, and then there's one for, oh yeah, numerical calculus. This method can also give you an estimate for final crack length, but it will tend to miss the boat because of delta N. This is so sensitive to that delta N. If your delta N stays linear on each step, then it may work pretty close. If it doesn't, it probably will miss the boat, as it appears to have done in your case. It could be you had some other error because you had enough steps to where I would think, hmm, that might have converged. I wonder why it didn't. So it's maybe just be you have a little error in there. Okay. So what we're going to do is say, let's see, 0.95 uh, from here. Let me just make this a little cleaner. Let's say we start with 005. I mean, it's 001. We calculated beta. We calculated K1. And actually, we don't even need to calculate K1, right? All we need to do is just plug in that beta along with our stress level, our max stress level. Hopefully, you're using max stress and not the average stress, right? to calculate right. AF, and let's say we get 0.95. This is a big change, probably has a huge amount of beta change, right? If we look at our curve, then that's A over B is probably going from somewhere down here to somewhere up here. We can glance at it and go, wow, that's nonlinear. 
So we'll say, ah, forget that. Let's just, in step two, let's just increase this maybe by a factor of 10, right? That's still quite a ways from this. Calculate beta, calculate, and now we get 0.85. Oh, look, this looks well behaved. Look, we went from 0.01 to 0.01, and we came from 0.95 to 0.85. That seems reasonable, but it looks like we're still quite a ways away. So let's make this 0.1 then. And now we get 0.75. Oh, look how well behaved this is. Look, this is coming closer and this is coming closer. Great. Let's try point ah, three. Let's not go too far. Point six, five. Woo, getting closer. Okay, let's try point four, five. Point five, five. Woo, okay, great. We're getting close. Point five, oh. Point five, one. Seven. Point five, oh, five. 0.504. Oh, we passed it. Let's back up a little bit. Hey, 0.504. Oops, 5048. 0.5049. Oh, yeah, almost is probably 0.5048. Looks like sig figs. 0.505 is our answer. Good enough for government work. Or 5048 or 5049. That's how you do it. Uh. Woo! Is that cool? Uh, yeah. So that is how you calculate the final crack length. Hope it helps.